Hi everybody, it's Sarah Cray and I teach watercolor and today we are doing our winter night tree. Uh, we have Keenan here working the cameras. Working them. And we're gonna be doing this project in five steps. So our very first step is we will be doing our background. Our second step is we will paint our tree. Our third step is we're gonna put some shadow on the ground and start putting some snow in our sky. Our fourth step is we will put snow on our tree and if we need to put more hither, we will. And our last step is just kind of looking at the horizon line, looking at the details and finishing it up. Okay? Sweet. I'm using three paint brushes for this project. Round two, round six, round 12. These are our Let's Make Art Classic series, our go-to brushes. Um, I'm using Let's Make Art watercolor paper and I cut it in half. You want to make sure that you're painting on the more textured side. And if you're new, you're like, well, both sides of watercolor paper is textured and you're right. You wanna look for the side where the bumps come out more than the side that the bumps go in to the paper, okay? We are using one, two, three, four, five colors in this project. We have yellow ochre, red, sea blue, emerald green, and our very last color is bleed proof white for our snow, okay? Mm. Now, if you get this in your box, um, and if it's like dried out, what you can do is just add a little bit of water in there, mix it all up, and it should come back just fine, okay? But hopefully it's like this really, it should be a really thick consistency, more like um, acrylic paint, even more like gouache, even more like oil. So it's not liquid. It is definitely a creamy consistency, okay? That's how it's supposed to be. Okay. We do not have an outline with this project, which might be scary for those that are not comfortable with trees, but I'll guide you through it. And let's do our oath and get to painting, okay? Okay. If you can you, uh, raise your right hand and repeat after me. I promise to be kind to myself. I promise to be kind to myself. I promise not to compare my work. I promise not to compare my work. And I promise to have fun. And I promise to have fun. Thank you so very much. Okay, so um, this theme for our box is merry and bright. I'm really thinking about winter and the holiday seasons. And the thing about Missouri is it snows here. Like it's like legit winter here. Mm. And it totally threw me off when I first moved here from California because it was a rare and very exciting thing to see snow in Sacramento. Didn't really happen and it never like stuck. Um, and so when I moved out here, I was just like, what is happening? But now that I've been here, I'm a little more seasoned, seasoned Missourian. Mm -hmm. um, winter is actually wonderful because things close down and it. I feel like your little family can like go into hibernation and you're just all at home and you're making dinner and you can't, literally can't leave your driveway and you're just like, well, we're just bunkering in for the night. You know what I mean? And totally. there's something kind of nice about that. And so some of my favorite times are like when it's nighttime, looking out and seeing the moon reflecting and it's actually super bright because the snow is white. And so when light is reflecting off snow, it's like, you know, it's like silent and you can see the snow falling and it's like this quiet softness. And so when I was um, thinking about this box and what I wanted to paint, I really wanted to capture that feeling of a silent, snowy night. So that's what we're gonna paint today. Cool. Okay? So I'm gonna start with doing my background. And if you want to like sketch in your horizon line, you totally can. I'm gonna do like essentially like a quarter of the paper. I'm just gonna put it in. It doesn't need to be a perfect horizontal line. Um, just kind of sketch that in, okay? I'm gonna use my 12 and I want to mix a very dark blue color, okay? So I have my sea blue here, so I'm really gonna utilize this a lot. And I'm actually gonna just keep this puddle here and I'm gonna bring some red into it. Now just by adding red to this sea blue color, it's gonna turn it more purpley color. Let me show you what that color is gonna turn into. Mm. Isn't that pretty? Yeah, it is. So this is a really nice dark value. And then what I like to do, so 
this is the color that I'm mostly going to be painting with, but I kind of like to desaturate it just a little bit um, and have an option to go slightly darker. So this is just two colors mixed together, sea blue and red. What I'm going to do is I'm gonna take some of that and pull it off to the side. I'm gonna mix more red into it and I'm gonna mix a little bit of yellow ochre. And so now it's kind of like a more neutral color. Do you mm. see that? It's reading more black maybe? Yeah. So now I have this really dark value. So at the edge of my paper, I wanna do super dark value, transition to a lighter value, and then come back out to dark, okay? And then I'm gonna add water to that and just see what color kind of comes out. That actually feels better as my as like my center as opposed to if I took this sea blue and added water to it, this is more saturated. Do you see the difference? Yes. Okay, so you guys can choose how saturated you wanted it to be. I decided to go with the more gray and added water to that for my center because I felt like this was too bright blue, but this is your painting, okay? All right, let's go for it. Yes. So I'm just gonna take my 12. If you want to start by adding water, you can, or you can just take the paint and just immediately go for it. So I'm starting with this dark value. And I'm going to let it be a little bit streaky. And I just want to like call out, like this is reading a little green to me. Do you see that? Mm -hmm. If anything is reading too green, if you add a little touch of magenta or red or fuchsia or rose red, you will neutralize that green. So that's what I'm gonna do right now while I see it. Okay. Because we're not going for Aurora Borealis, we're going for- Night. Night. And then as I work my way to the center, I'm just gonna be adding water. And I'm okay if my sky is streaky. I am not interested in a perfect smooth wash here. I want it to feel a little bit messy. Okay, and then I'm gonna continue that on the other side, this dark value. Make sure you paint all the way to the edge. Maybe a little bit darker up here. And then I'm gonna do one more layer kind of in the middle because we want it to be a lighter value in the middle, but we don't want it to be like white. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And then if you wanna add like little hints of like more purple in here, I just mixed a little bit more red with my sea blue to get more of like a purpley color and I'm doing another layer but I can't see your painting. So if you're happy with the colors that you've already achieved, you don't have to like keep adding layers. But this is kind of what we're going for. And what I want to do a little bit is I think I might actually lighten, like lift up some color along the sides. I want there to be a clear shift, but it felt like more of a spotlight. And I don't know if I want full out spotlight, you know what I mean? So I'm just kind of lifting up to transition. This could be a Hallmark movie cover. Yes, it could. Right? Home for the holidays Home. in cursive. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Love at When Winter disaster night. strikes. <laughs> yeah. No, no, you disaster. gotta do those like Hallmark movies. Are, there's like... always a disaster in the beginning. Oh, that's true. Someone comes and offers money for the entire city. They're like, caught in a snowstorm or caught in love. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> okay, and you want to make sure that your sky is going past the horizon that you drew, okay? And those brush marks are kind of bothering me, so I'm just going to mess them up. Do you know the majority of Hallmark movies are filmed in Canada? Really? Yeah. Well, I thought that was totally interesting. Surprising. Yeah. Because of the weather, right? Like, do right. they want that? Yeah, it's cold there. Well, even sunny ones sometimes. 
Oh, all? Not just like, the Christmas like ones? A lot of them. Oh. Uh huh. So I need to move to Canada. <laughs> Get on one of those Get movies. Get on one of those movies. I'm going to pitch this idea. I'll be like, look, I even made the, the cover, the movie cover and everything. They're like, what's it about? <laughs> Cotton is storm or cotton what? <laughs> That's what it's about. There's no people, it's just a tree. <laughs> <laughs> This is a Batman theme movie, actually. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we did step one. We did our background. And then I'm going to kind of let that dry. Um, and while that's drying, I'm going to mix a color for my tree. So I want to do a dark green. So. Did you say green or gray? Green. Sorry. Green. Did okay. I kind of like. You faded. Faded out? Yes. I'm going to actually use my hair dryer. <laughs> it's not a hair dryer, you guys. It's silly, called a heat it craft tool. Hair dryer would probably work. Though. You can find one at your local Marriott. <laughs> it might be attached to the wall. Why don't you just go ahead and rip it out? Just bring a screwdriver. <laughs> they give them to you. They, I, you won't get in trouble, nope. I promise. You might get a charge later down the road. Don't worry about it. Uh -uh. And then I just want to call attention to the fact that your painting will change as it dries. Values, color, that's just the way watercolor is. Um, so if, like for me, I'm just like, man, I just want there to be a little bit of a darker edge. You can put that in now. Like if you're like drying it and you're like, no, this isn't really as dark as I want it to be, you can add it. Or the opposite, where you're just like, I actually really, um, want this to be lighter, you can lift color out. Now it's not gonna totally disappear, but it's possible to like lighten, you know? A lot of people think that like watercolor is not adjustable. And there is a level to that that is true. Um, you can't totally cover it like you can with um, like acrylic or gouache even, cause it's not opaque. But you can darken, you can lighten, you can adjust. So I'm going to do that. And you can see my background is looking funky. It is messy. That's okay. I don't want you guys to, we kind of want that because I, I want it to feel like cloudy, snowy, maybe stormy, but not quite. You know what I mean? Oh yeah. I've seen several nights like that here. Yeah. So this tree actually makes me think I need to set up a tree like this in my yard. You do. And decorate it with snow. You can take one of these. Thank you. <laughs> no one will even notice. No one will notice. They have seven of them. <laughs> All right, I need to stop messing with that. I'm just gonna call this good. Whatever happens, this is good. I'm getting a bunch of blooms here. I'm getting some streaks. I'm getting some dry brush texture from when I layered that. I'm okay with all of it. Give yourselves freedom in this step. There are some paintings where you have to be a little bit more precise and intentional and it needs to be smooth. And whenever I come across a painting where I don't have to worry about that, I just like let go. You know what I mean? Cause sometimes it's nice just to like paint and not stress so much. Okay. So the background on this is one of those paintings. Just paint. It's going to be fine. Whatever you put down. Okay. Okay. So for our tree, I want to mix a dark green. So I have a lot of this dark value from my sky that I just did for my background. And I'm just going to add green to it. And we're going to see what color this turns out. Oh, it's a dark green. <laughs> huh. Huh. Imagine that. Wow. Wow. Paint wasn't sleeping on that move. <laughs> Um, another thing that you can do is you can actually mix your, I'm taking some red over here and my emerald. Let's see what that does. This creates more like a desaturated green. I don't like that as much. I think the sea blue green is better. I agree. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well then I'm going to go with this color. You just want to make sure you got a good amount because we got to paint a tree here. So this tree is probably mm, not quite, how do I say this? It's like half, half of my paper almost. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah. Okay. 
And originally, I just wanna call this out. My horizon line is here. I went, and I'm drawing this in pencil, you don't need to do this. I went over it on purpose so then I don't have white gaps where my snowy line and my background meet. Um, but when I paint my tree, I want my tree to stop about here. I wanna make sure it crosses my horizon line, and but I still have room to do a shadow. If I were to wait till, like if I pretended this was my horizon line, then the bottom of my made tree would be here and I would have no room for shadow. Does that make sense? Yep. And we have bleed proof white here. So this is why I'm being a little bit messy because I'm gonna actually go over and do a snowy horizon line with my white. So if you wanna move your whole thing up, you can. So look at where you want your paper to be compositionally. I'm gonna have my tree end probably here. I know I said here, but I'm changing my mind. I'm gonna do it here. And that way I have plenty of room for a shadow and it does not encroach on the bottom of my uh, painting. Okay? Okay. Question. Yeah. Bleed proof white. Yeah. You've mentioned it a couple times. It's opaque, correct? Correct. Can you mix color into it? Yes. Would that be beneficial in any way for this? Um, yes. Okay, so you can mix bleed proof white with colors and what that will do is it will make it a lighter value because you're mixing white into it excuse me it'll make it a lighter value but there is a difference in transparent paint and opaque paint okay so whenever you put those together you'll see a difference not just in color but just in how it shows up on the paper so for example let's say i wanted to put a house in here and I used blue proof white and mix it with brown so then it can layer on top of the blue and become brown. You can absolutely do that. It will have a different consistency than the watercolor portions of your painting. Does that make sense? Yep. And that's not a bad thing. It's just something that I want to call attention to. Your house will not look watercolor. Your house will look opaque and that's okay. But it, and it's totally possible. Did I answer your question? Yes, you did. Okay, great. <laughs> Thank you. You're welcome. Okay, so I'm gonna start by doing my trunk and I want it to be about here. So I'm gonna just do a line going up and you don't have to worry about it being like super thin or anything, but we want it to be fairly straight. If it's not though, we'll just like even it out when we paint it. And then when we do trees, I like to work from the inside out. So I put in kind of like the height of my tree Oh, like you start in the middle? Yeah. Oh, wow. So instead of doing like an outline and then filling it in, you want to start in the middle and oh, then I work see. your oh, way out. Oh, I see. You see what I'm saying? I do see that. Now, overall, you want your tree to be a triangle shape. So if you start in the middle here, okay, and then let's say I have branches kind of coming out this way. You just want to make sure that like, this the overall shape is like a cone or a triangle i often have to draw anchor points for yeah. my eyes to follow right so if we're doing anchor points here mm -hmm. this is it and then trees are dimensional right and so depending on the fir tree sometimes the branches actually angle up and sometimes they kind of droop down there's different kinds of trees so i'm going to do the ones where they kind of go angle up Okay, so you can see I have them slightly angled up. And then when I paint, I'm lifting my brush and I'm kind of going off of those points. And as your brush gets to like the edge of the tree, you want your marks to be a little bit smaller. Now we'll go back over it with a round two, but I just want to call that out now. We want it to be nice and dark underneath, right? Because it's like going under, so there would be a shadow underneath there. Okay, is my tree straight? I feel like I need to like 
sharpen that along the top. And this is why I like, like you can adjust your tree. If it's leaning, you can just like make it a little bit taller and then reshape it. You know what I'm saying? So don't stress too much, but this is where you want to be like, okay, is my tree nice and straight? Let's do some smaller ones here. And then now I gotta like have the sides honor the shape I just made. And I'm taking little, I'm doing little detail brush marks along the edge here. Sometimes what I like to do too with a little brush like this is sometimes I'll just smear the paint that's already there in the direction that I think like the pine needles or whatever are going. So I'm gonna go up a little bit but it kind of creates different marks, textures and shapes without me having to do a lot of work. And if your painting has dried too much, then you can't like actually smear it. So if you need to grab some paint and put it in, do so. I still feel like I need to go a little bit more narrow up here. Hmm. And like trees come in all shapes and sizes. I work really hard to try and make it feel like even, but have you ever gone to a Christmas tree lot and try to find an even tree. Do you know how hard that is? Do you know how rare <laughs> it is? So like, if your tree is wonky, if it has a bare side, if there's one branch that's just like sticking out, like saying, hey, totally normal, okay? So like, I do this because I don't want a wonky tree to distract my the composition in my painting. But if you're going for realism here, wonky trees are like what you got. So also majorly patchy, just missing yes, limbs. Yes. And I, I don't know, I just want this to be like narrower. So I keep going up. It's maybe gonna I'm, be a huge tree. Maybe I'm overworking it, but that just feels better to me. I like it. Yeah. And then I gotta like have some little branches like come out and like there are some trees that are so full and tight that it feels like a really thing and there are some that are bare like Kim was saying where it's just like no this little chunk is missing or like you'll see more of the branches and the needles itself mm -hmm. I'm going for a more very full very dense tree but that doesn't have to be you you know what I'm saying like you can do um, whatever you want to do and I'm just going to introduce I've been using that same dark green and I'm going to mix more of this like purple into the green to get like a darker value and just kind of drop it in here and there. We will be putting a lot of bleed proof white on our tree, um, but I just like different little hints of different values in my tree I think are nice. This would be really fun to do a Charlie Brown tree. Oh my gosh, yes. And like my, um, like my in-laws, they get like a silver, I think it's called a silver tip tree. And those trees are actually really bare. Like there's like, big chunks of sections between the branches and it's actually perfect for hanging ornaments oh, cool. because you can do it all the way through and you can see them really good. Um, huh. So just think about the kind of tree that you wanna paint and if you wanna look at a couple, like Google that and paint that instead of this full one, like you have my permission and support. I just feel like my tree's too perfect and I, I don't like that, so I'm I meant symmetrical, like mm -hmm. the edge. Yeah, we know what you meant. <laughs> <laughs> I just painted the perfect tree. <laughs> That's not what I mean. I just want it to be a little bit wonkier, just a little bit. Gives it some life. There we go. Cool. That feels better. Okay. Now what we are going to do is we are going to focus on putting in some snow. We're gonna focus on kind of our shadow on our tree, adjusting the horizon line a little bit, and actually, I'm gonna make my tree, before I do that, 
I'm actually going to do one more layer and go have it go a little bit deeper than I originally did. And then if I want to, like right now, this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to just take my dark value. You can see here that it's green on my reference photo, but you can use blue like, and I'm just going to um, take a damp brush and just kind of smear it to make my shadow. Hmm. That's it. That's awesome. Just nothing too crazy, just a little shadow. And for me, I love a good like rough edge. So mm -hmm. just kind of like go for it. I'm gonna let that dry. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to do my snow. So take my round six. I'm gonna grab some bleed proof white here. and remove any and all nice and expensive things because we are gonna splatter. And I always like to do a test splatter. You can do it on a scratch piece of paper or over your palette. And then that way you can just see like, if you were to get like big globs of water and white paint, it would happen on your first or second splatter because that's when you'll have the most in your brush. So if you wanna get rid of those first, like boop, boop, now we can be like, all right, let's go and then because I really like the feeling and look of falling snow I'm gonna smear it so I'm gonna take you can take a reference photo you can take a scratch paper whatever what and now it feels like it's moving that's cool. Isn't that cool? Yes, it is. Oh, I, uh, one of the other really cool things and also terrifying things when driving in Missouri, <laughs> when you're driving in the snow and the snow is coming at you, you literally look like you're in like a vortex tunnel. Cause it's just like, and it's like moving and it's all highlighted because of your car high, high beams. And it's just like, I wanted to get that feeling of movement in my night sky. So you're like, it's like you're in the enterprise, you're going at light speed. Yes. And you can decide, like if you wanna be a little bit more intentional with your snow and do like a couple here, here, here. I like the really big flakes that Me just too. float, fall down. And then now with obviously the bigger ones, you're gonna get bigger movements. I'm okay with that. It's just fun. We're just going for fun here. And then let's do some like tinier ones. Not all of them need to be like these big moving ones, you know, like we can get some. Now I'm excited for snow. You know, there's something about it. And I just want to call attention to the one I'm painting right now, this painting is reading a little bit more green than my reference photo. And I'm actually so okay with that. Like, I think the coloring on this is beautiful. But if you're looking at this and you're like, this is a different color. Yeah, it is. But that's because we mixed our colors, you know? I just feel like it gives it, I don't know, like this warm, vintage feel a little bit agreed but i want to call that out because i don't want you to feel like you're doing anything wrong whenever we mix our colors we always get slightly different ones from each other from our reference and it's true from me who originally painted this into this you know okay um one thing that i'm going to do is take my bleed proof white and i'm actually going to kind of adjust my horizon line a little bit so I'm actually gonna like pick up some bleed proof white, get it wet so it's a little bit easier to move. And kind of just paint over that blue. And it's not gonna, I don't want it to be a perfect white. I want there to be some color to it because just that shift in value is giving us a sense of depth. Hmm. From the white of the paper to the front to how it kind of changes. And 
it kind of feels like it's like snow starting to fall on the ground, you know? <laughs> I Every time I think of snow falling on the ground, I automatically think of mowing one last time before the snow comes. Because if there's a, a thin layer of snow, it's not great with the grass sticking out for sledding. Oh. You know? So you're like, I got to get. I got to I gotta mow one more time. But it's supposed to be 30 next week, so. Ooh, yeah, it's getting there. It's starting to, it's about that time. Yep. And maybe, and then this is where you're just like, if you want to put in a, a little hill in the background, or mm. you know what I mean? Like, you really can play with this horizon and do whatever you want to do. I'm going to keep it pretty simple. But I do want to try and kind of create a smooth line. And you got to just kind of work around your tree. And don't worry, we'll go back into it, so it's not a big deal, but. Okay. And then what I'm going to do is um, the snow on my tree. But this area that I painted and then quickly moved into my shadow, you see how I lost the bottom of my tree a little bit? Mm -hmm. I need to redefine that before I finish it up, put in the snow. So I'm just gonna grab more paint dark value and kind of like re redo that bottom so it's very clear this is the bottom of my tree and this is the shadow and then you can kind of paint over some of that white a little bit so it's very clear this tree is in front of that horizon line And then for this foreground area, I'm just gonna take, I have like this random bluish grayish color. And I'm just gonna do a few like, just put a little bit of something in the foreground so it's not just white paper, you know what I mean? Hmm. It's a fun way to do it. It doesn't have to be anything too crazy. You could do an igloo. You could do an igloo. You can also lift, like I put a lot of bleed proof white right here and I don't love how white it was. So I'm actually taking water and lifting some of it out. But just use like a dry brush. We're just getting like texture here. And I think what I did here, cause I just want to call this out. I'm looking at my reference photo and I'm looking at my tree. And for me, the horizon line feels so much closer to me in my painting that I'm doing now than this one. And I think it's because this white highlight, when you highlight something or have a white value where it's reading as the lightest section, it automatically pulls it forward. Yeah. So if you want to push your background back a little bit, then what I'm going to do is you can either like lift out that bleed proof white or even just like kind of paint over it, introduce it to another color and push it back into space. Wow. That feels better to me. Does that feel better to you? Yes. Okay, cool. I hadn't noticed it like that though until you mentioned Pointed it. Pointed out. Okay, and now that my tree is pretty much dry, I am going to add the bleed proof white onto my tree. The snow is falling, the branches that are sticking out are catching it. And so I'm gonna think back to the overall shape of my tree. And remember your tree has sections, right? Like we got the trunk and then where the branches kind of come out. 
Now, um, what the other thing that we have to keep in mind is that branches are coming forward too. So it's not like we would just have snow along the sides. We would have snow where these branches are kind of coming out towards us. And so like, I'm kind of keeping in line with that, um, those chunks, like here's a branch popping out and we're gonna put snow on that. And you see how they all kind of curve. I don't wanna do straight white, like horizontally across, because that will flatten my tree. Because the tree is rounded, the snow that goes on it needs to also have a curve. So here's some snow that's being caught. And here's some snow that's being caught. And if you want to, you can use your round six or your round two, whatever is easier for you. Here's some in the. And so we're basically just thinking about the snow catching on these different parts of our tree. And I'm just going to keep going, add in that those little pieces of snow. I feel like I missed a little bit of a section. And you can do as little or as much of this as you want. There, are, It depends on how heavy your snowstorm is, right? Like sometimes you go outside and there's a light dusting of snow on trees. And sometimes you go outside and it's just like snow. <laughs> Where is that tree? You know? Mm -hmm. So um, don't think that it has to be a certain way. If you accidentally did too much white, then be like, all right, well, this is a very intense snowstorm now. And like, you have that right as an artist to make those decisions. When I was four or five, and mm -hmm. I may have told this story before, uh, we had only lived in Missouri for, this would be the second, maybe third winter. Mm -hmm. Well, it was a really bad blizzard. Mm -hmm. Um, and I was with two of my sisters and a brother-in-law and their new baby. And we got stuck in said blizzard in the Jeep. <gasps> and uh, my brother-in-law tried to dig us out, but he couldn't because we didn't have a shovel or any cat litter, which is very useful in the winter here. Mm -hmm. um, and so we got stuck. Well, we saw one lone light from a house, like yeah. a mile and a half away, which we don't know how we saw the light. They talk about it still. And we had, we had to walk there, but it took forever. Cause it was- a snowstorm? It, and it, oh, it was a blizzard. They, they ended up having six and a half foot drifts <gasps> next to the Jeep the next morning. We had to be dug out by a, like a bulldozer. We had to walk through it. How old was the baby? Oh, I mean, months. And they just held, that's terrifying. How old were you? Four or five. Oh my gosh. I, I fell in one of the drifts and they had to get me out. Oh my God. Yeah. What if they were like, all right, Keenan, <laughs> we'll come back for you. <laughs> Good luck. <laughs> Good luck. <laughs> you, uh, you love the snow. <laughs> <laughs> You'll be fine. Grow some chest hair. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's when it started. <laughs> uh, okay. Now, um, the other thing that I want to call attention to is depending on how opaque, well, first of all, Keenan, I'm so glad you guys are okay. Oh yeah, no, we're great. Here, yes. well, it was years ago. I've seen so many blizzards since Did then. Did you just stay at that person's house? Yeah, they became some friends of ours. Oh really? Yeah. I don't remember their names, but. Wow, good, great friends. I was a child. Was Saved your life, Keaton. <laughs> <laughs> what I do remember is a nice warm fire and the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles marathon. That's all, that's what really that's matters. That's really all I cared about. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so um, depending on how much bleed proof white you have on your brush, your white is either gonna be very white or um, if it's not as opaque, if you like have a lot of water on your brush when you pick up the white and it's kind of watered down, then you'll see more of the tree underneath the snow which will make the white just not as bright. Um, I don't really think that there's one like a bad way. I just wanna acknowledge that. So if you're painting this and you're like, oh, the snow is not as, as white as I want it to, let your painting dry, get some clean water and make sure you're grabbing mostly this bleed proof white on your brush and paint with that. Let it be nice and thick and then you'll get some nice white highlights. If you don't like how bright mine is and you kind of like the reference photo more where it's not as vibrant, then you would just put a little bit more water on your brush and pick up not as much bleed proof white. Does that make sense? Yep. So use that information as you will to your advantage or whatever. And the last thing that I kind of want to do here is 
Um, I want there to be a little hint of something on this horizon line. I made this decision as a last step when I painted this project where I wasn't planning on that, but it felt like it needed something there. So I'm gonna give you this option to add this or not. But I'm gonna take some of that green that I kind of have from my tree, this kind of like really dark gray desaturated green. And right at this horizon line, the snow line, I'm just gonna do some rough brush textures where I'm basically just introducing a slightly different hue, which is green, and a little bit of a darker value because we're doing another layer along this horizon line to say, I'm not sure what's going on, but there's something back there. We don't know what, probably more trees, but it doesn't need to be a lot of detail. Sometimes just the hint of something either with a different value, a different hue, a different texture, different brush stroke is all you need to give the idea of something. And for me, I noticed that my brush strokes were all the same. Did you guys see that? Mm. And I don't like that. So what I'm gonna do, so I'm actually gonna work the brush kind of back and forth in some of the areas, have them be a little bit taller, maybe go sideways a bit, like kind of mess that up. Cause that feels a little bit more natural to me than um, like the same exact size across the whole thing, you know? Yeah, and it looks really cool. And if you're using just water, you might accidentally be picking up the paint instead of putting it down, which would accidentally create a lighter value. Um, so just if that's happening to you, then just grab more paint when you do this instead of using just like a damp brush, you know? Hmm. And again, this, this step is totally optional. I just felt like I needed something there. Just a little something, something. It doesn't even have to go all the way across. If you just want it kind of like peeking along the side, you can do that too. And sometimes I'll like work it into the sky a little bit more too, if I feel like it's standing out a little bit too much and I want it to kind of push back a little bit more. Very messy, very messy stuff we're doing right here, but kind of like it. I want there to be just a stronger Just details, finishing details, doing some rough texture strokes. I didn't like how smooth that came out, so I'm messing it up. There we go, that feels better. Cool. Yep. That's it. Wow. That's our project. Our winter night tree. Should we untape it? Yep. It's the best part. That is the best part. And that's really good tape. Lots of people want that tape. <laughs> <laughs> yep. I felt like I needed some brighter snow before I untaped it just because of how white the snow is on my tree. I feel like I need a little mm. bit more of that in my sky. And if you just want to like smear it yourself, instead of using the card, you can just do like dashes instead of dots, you know? Okay. Morse code. Say Morse code? Mm-hmm, dots and dashes. Oh yeah. You could totally do a Morse code message on there. Okay, so I'm gonna peel away from my painting and you want to do it at an angle like this. Slowly and carefully.
I mean, I'm not saying that you should paint Christmas cards, but also this would make a beautiful Christmas Ooh, card. Ooh, this would. This would actually be a really fun way to practice drawing or painting your own tree. You do the background, choose a tree in your yard, and then yeah. see if you can do it. Yeah. Gosh, the clean edge. I know. Can you even handle it? I know someone specifically who would <laughs> love to be able to not handle it. <laughs> <laughs> Look at that. So good. Okay. That's our project. That is our winter night tree. That tree is moving. I, when I do this. Yeah, it looked like it was 3D almost. <laughs> I'm like, yeah, I was moving it. <laughs> oh, okay. Now I'm full of jokes. Um, anyways, you guys have fun with this. Um, I can't wait to see what you, um, how yours turn out. I mean, everyone is going to be different. I know that we paint the same project, but we're mixing colors. There's no outline here. We're making decisions as we go and we're letting our painting, we're letting our painting inform us, which means it's going to be different. And we celebrate those differences. We look at that as an opportunity to learn from each other instead of saying, Oh, I should have done this instead, or I'm better than you. You know, maybe that's me. I mean, like, I am competitive, but I'm working mm -hmm. on it like really hard. And yeah. a lot of my beginning journey of art, um, I will say I robbed myself of so much joy because I cared very much about being the best. And I cared very much about looking at what you were doing and then me doing it and then being like, oh, well, mine's better, you know? And it's just like, was not a healthy way to go about creating. And I realized that when you do that, you don't make it about the painting. You don't make it about creating. You don't make it about learning. When you, when you focus on whether it's comparing yourself to somebody else or getting down on yourself for not being as good as someone or where you think you should be, um, we lose the joy. We focus on trying to define our value instead of recognizing that there we don't have to do that we're valuable already that's a given whatever we're painting it's worth it our happiness is worth it and when we're just trying to um, get down on ourselves or compare to someone else we um, lose that and then it's just like well what are we even doing this for you know it's obviously not for us <laughs> So have fun with this, play with this experiment, look at other people's as an opportunity to learn or be excited and be curious instead of as a way to um, like dismiss them or ourselves. And if you're on Facebook, you can see what everybody is painting. We have this entire group that's dedicated to sharing what we're learning in the journey. That's called Let's Make Art Watercolor. If you're on Instagram, you can share your work. We have a couple hashtags that you can look at. We'll put that in the description below. And if you need any of these supplies, you can find them at letsmakeart.com. We're done. Done. See you guys next time. Bye.